In this video, we're going to be discussing Lachman's test, which is one of the special tests used in the assessment of an ACL injury. To perform Lachman's test, the patient's going to be positioned in supine, as you see here, with their test side lower extremity in 20 to 30 degrees of hip flexion and 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion and their foot should preferentially be flat on the table. If the patient does not possess sufficient plantar flexion range of motion for the entire foot to be flat, at the very least the heel needs to be planted on the table. That foot cannot move, as we'll see in just a few minutes. Now, in a previous video, we looked at the anterior drawer test of the knee. This is another special test used to assess the integrity of the ACL. And in that test, both hands did the same thing. We wrapped both hands around the patient's proximal calf, both thumbs ended up on the tibial tuberosity, and we applied an anterior directed force to the tibia relative to the femur. We're still going to apply the same force here, but hand positioning is very different. Also notice the angles of the hip and knee are different. So with one hand, the PT is going to firmly grip the patient's femur for stabilization. I'm going to do that with my right hand. So I grab around the femur right there as much as I can, try to hold that in position. And with my other hand, I'm going to firmly grip the patient's proximal calf. I'm going to again take up a skin lock uh, to take up all the soft tissue slack. And then I'm going to position my thumb on the patient's tibial tuberosity. So there's the skin lock, thumb on the tibial tuberosity, right? And the reason I take up that slack in the soft tissue is so when I apply that anterior force to the tibia, I'm not just moving skin and soft tissue, I'm actually moving the tibia relative to the femur. Okay? And now from here I'm going to apply a force to translate the patient's tibia anteriorly. So it'll look like this, again pulling it in this direction. And you'll notice there's a little bit of movement there, not much, but there is a little bit. So for a normal test or negative test, you can have a little bit of movement, but it needs to be painless and associate it with a firm end feel. And it's a firm end feel because if it's negative or normal, the ACL is intact. Okay? That being said, a positive test is going to indicate a rupture to the ACL, either partial or complete. Remember, if it's a partial rupture, it's actually going to be painful. And if it's a complete rupture, it'll actually be painless. Okay? Again, a positive Lachman's test is going to be indicated by excessive anterior tibial translation, which is almost always associated with a mushy end feel, not a firm end feel. The other thing to remember is that when I apply that anterior tibial translation, that foot right there cannot come up off the table. If it happens to come up off the table, uh, then the test is not valid. That heel, at the very least, needs to be planted there and not move. Okay. Now, the psychometrics of Lachman's test were evaluated by Katz and Fingeroth in 2013, and the exact values that you use depend on whether or not you have an acute or chronic ACL injury. The ACL injury was defined as being acute if Lachman's test was performed within two weeks of the injury, and it was considered chronic if Lachman's test was performed beyond two weeks of the injury. Okay? Now, if we look at an acute ACL injury, we have a sensitivity of 78% and a specificity of greater than 95%. So, not too great on the sensitivity, uh, but the specificity is excellent. For a chronic ACL injury, the sensitivity is 85%, and the specificity, again, is greater than 95%. So, these values really tell us two major things about the test. Number one, Regardless of whether the injury is acute or chronic, if you have a suspected ACL tear, you can use Lachman's test, regardless of the time frame, to rule up an ACL injury. And that's based on having a specificity that's greater than 95% regardless. Again, if you test positive for Lachman's test, there would be a 95% chance, at the very least, of having an ACL tear. The other thing that's interesting here is the sensitivity values. Compared to that of the anterior drawer test, they're actually very good. Here's the anterior drawer test of the knee that we covered earlier. Notice the sensitivities for acute and chronic injuries are 22 and 41 percent respectively. Absolutely terrible. I said there that you could never use the anterior drawer test to rule down an ACL tear even if the test is negative. But if we look at Lachman's test, especially with a chronic ACL injury, that sensitivity is all the way up at 85%. That's pretty good. In other words, if you have a patient that comes in, they had an injury to the knee, 
and they have pain, they have maybe some instability there, and you run Lachman's test and it comes back negative, well then you can say there's an 85% chance that they actually don't have an injury to the ACL, and that may actually redirect you to looking at other potential structures as either a pain generator or the contributor to the knee instability. Let's take one more look at Lachman's test. Again, patient will be in supine with the test side lower extremity at 20 to 30 degrees of hip flexion, 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion, and the foot flat on the table. Again, at the very least, the heel needs to be in contact. The foot cannot move during the test procedure. With one hand, the PT will stabilize the patient's femur above the knee, and with the other hand, we'll grab the proximal calf, take up a skin lock, with the thumb on the patient's tibial tuberosity. And then once we have a good grasp on the patient's tibia, we're gonna to attempt to translate it anteriorly. And note that the heel cannot come up off the table. It needs to remain in contact. A normal or negative test would be a painless firm end feel indicating an ACL that's intact, but a positive test is gonna be associated with excessive anterior tibial translation with a mushy end feel. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.